What's going on? It's your boy Sermon at Sermon's Domain on Twitter. Strange Music is back with their latest collabs album titled Strange Elation 2. It's the follow up to 2014 Strange Elation, which was a very, a very good album. I actually had to revisit it, um, you know, when getting prepared to review number two. So it brought back a lot of, you know, memories because some, sometimes I have, I listen to albums you know, for review purposes or just because I like the artist and then I end up not putting it on my iPod or it gets lost on my iPod to where it's like I got over 4,000 songs. So it was good to revisit it. Um, I got to say, I, I miss the fact that J-Rock's not a part of Strange Music. I believe that was the last project that he's appeared on. Um, but getting into number two, I felt like uh, Tech is doing everything right with his artist because he is... You know, not only putting them on the road, but he's dropping these collabs albums that, you know, are still technically Tech 9 albums, but they just feature all, you know, the Strange Music roster. And it's a good way to promote, especially because they just signed a new cat named uh, Darian Saffron. And I feel like he could be huge. He's like a, he's a, he's a singer. And he's on Fire. He's on Real With Yourself. Um, he's on another record. I think it's called uh, Just Wanna Party. With Ritz, is that what it's called? Uh... Yeah, we just want to party. Sorry, um, I feel like he could be huge, and I'm looking. I'm very much looking forward to his Strange Music debut project um, in the future. So, I th and I, and that's one of the things that the Clap album is supposed to do. It's supposed to get you excited for more material from the artist. Uh, someone like Ritz. Ritz has always been uh, an artist that I've loved since before his debut album, since before he signed Strange Music when he was running with Yellow Wolf. So hearing him on here, I'm like, okay, it's been a while since I heard, you know, a new Ritz project. So I definitely, I'm anticipating that. And um, I gotta say, I wanted to hear more of Brother Lynch. I believe he's only on one song and, you know, He's given, he doesn't given us much lately. I feel like his last album, you know, was really well done, but it was slept on naturally. But I would have loved to have seen him more on this project. Um, I think the cypher idea is awesome. Having, you know, uh, multiple cyphers where you're putting your artists over your classic beats is smart. Tech Nine, you know, uh, gives you know some of the classic beats that he's he spit on uh midwest choppers was one of them uh come gangster was another one and i think the come gangster one which i believe is uh the second uh cypher uh yeah it's the second cypher has stevie stone and Seth's crew i think that one might be my favorite just because i like the the way stevie sounds he sounds natural on the on the beat with his little you know crooning on it um, so that was a highlight for me, just all the ciphers in general, but that one was my favorite. Um, and I like also how the album has this sort of a loose concept to it. Not necessarily like a full concept, but many concepts here and there. Like, you know, the intruder skit, which kind of sets up, you know, the next song. And then like he had like the MERS message where, he's talk where he leaves a voice message for MERS. Like, you know, I know you don't smoke, but you need to get on this record. And, and at the end, you got to say, and a blunt and a hoe, something like that. And um, I think it just added a little bit to the album. Um, instead of just making it seem like it's just a bunch of songs, they do kind of fit together a little bit. Um, I've had a debate about this already, but one of my co-workers, his favorite song is Moi. Um, the Tech Nine record, Tech Nine and Chris Calico. And I love it because Seven, the producer, is a genius. He flips something that Tech 9 said in concert and flipped it into a hook. And that, in turn, made it into a song. Um, that's genius. But I got to say, like, I disagree with what my coworker was saying. He said it was the best song on the album. I disagree only because after a while it gets annoying because you're just hearing the same thing over and over and over. I appreciate the genius of it, but I definitely wouldn't crown it, you know, the best song on the album at all. Um, and kind of going back to Seven, Seven produced the entire thing. He's probably one of the most underrated producers in the game. He's been producing, I want to say, the bulk of Strange Music projects. I, or maybe it's just Tech 9 projects, but he's definitely been, he's had his hand in like 
everything strange music in the last couple years and he does not get the credit that he deserves for all of it especially because a lot of times you don't have one producer producing albums this isn't you know the 90s this isn't like when you know manny fresh was producing all of the cash money albums this is something that doesn't happen and when it does happen you have people that announce it it's like you know this artist and this producer team up and it's it's billed as them as a duo here you know seven's kind of still in the background um he's not advertised on like the cover or nothing like that but he he deserves a lot of credit man for what he does on these beats these beats are crazy um one more thing i wanted to go back to real quick was the singers I already talked about their newest signee, but there's also uh, Ryan Bradley, Mackenzie Ogin, and uh, Tyler Lyon. Those three had some really good records. There was it was Praise Call, which is the intro. Acting like you know was with Mackenzie and Tord was with Tyler. Um, I don't know. I just have a thing for singers, good singers, and you know, mesh them with Tech 9 and, and it just sounds good. So I wanted to definitely give them a little bit of a shine and props. And if you listen to the to the album, definitely, you know, pay attention to the singers. Um, and now I got three questions for you. So I talked a little bit about, I was impressed with Darian. Uh, which strange music artist had the most memorable presence on the album? Um, Second question, do you miss like the earlier collab albums where Tech, you know, would work with more than just strange music artists? I gotta say I do. For me to answer, I gotta say I definitely do. Um, I can't remember which one it is, but it was like a, a... I think it was one of the early collab albums, man. Probably like before the Mixgate plate. There was one that I really love, and I was like, yeah, I love this concept. And then he kind of switched it to just being strange music, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I also want to see him do, like, a collabs album with, you know, the outside world again. But I guess, in a way, that's kind of what his albums are, so you're still technically kind of getting that. I don't know, but I, I love that concept. Um, so do you miss it? Do you miss that? And not to take away from, you know, the strange music collab albums. And lastly, was Strangulation 1 or 2 better? Um, it's too early for me to answer that, but if you've been listening to the project, um, you might have an opinion on it, so I would love to hear it. Let me know in the comment section. Um, so Tech 9 continues to do what a lot of artists with labels can't do right, and that's promote their artists. Um, you know, alongside himself, Tech has one hell of a roster, and if you haven't figured it out yet, Strange Elation 2 will give you all the evidence that you need to know all of that. So definitely go pick up Strange Elation 2, Best Buy, Strange Music Store, iTunes, Google Play. Wherever you can find this album, go buy it. Go support him. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And then like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, share the video. Follow me on Twitter at Sermons Domain. And as always, thank you for your time. I appreciate you for watching. And until next time, peace.